This video is about the method of differences. It's a reasonably simple technique, especially for A-level further maths. It could easily be in the regular maths A-level. Um, the only thing you need to be careful about is how you set your work out. We're going to do two examples. So here's the first one. Uh, it's a two-part question. Part A says to express 2 over 2r two plus 1 times 2r plus 3 in partial fractions. I have already done that for us. The answer is 1 over 2r plus 1 minus 1 over 2r plus 3. Uh, I've done that for us because that's a regular A-level technique. Um, we should be pretty familiar with that by now. Um, so hopefully you're okay with that. If not, you need to go back and revise partial fractions in the regular A-level maths. Anyway, we are going to be using that answer to find the sum from 1 to n of 2 over 2r two plus 1 times 2r plus 3. So the point here then is instead of us finding this sum, because we know it's the same as this, we did that in part A, those two statements are equivalent. Instead of finding the sum of that single fraction, I could find the sum of the partial fractions, like this. So I've started a new, pa uh, new page here because I want to set my work out really carefully with this. So I want to find the sum from r equals 1 all the way up to n. So let's start off with r equals 1. Let's substitute 1 into this expression. So I will have 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So that's me just substituting 1 in instead of the r there. So 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1 is 1 over 3. Minus 1 over 2 times 1 plus 3 is 5. So substituting 1 into that expression gives 1 third minus 1 fifth. And crucially, I am not going to simplify that. And you'll see why in a moment. So that's me substituting the 1 in. Next, what about the 2? So let's substitute the 2 in. So I've got 1 over 2 times 2 plus 1. Subtract 1 over 2 times 2 plus 3. And again, I am not going to simplify that. Next. Substitute 3 in. So 1 over 2 times 3 plus 1. And 1 over 2 times 3 plus 3. And again, I'm not going to simplify that. And I could keep on going. I could substitute the 4 in. And I'd get another number here. Take away another number here. And so on. I want to go all the way up to r equals n. And I'm actually going to do a couple of terms before that as well. The penultimate term, the second last term in this sequence, would be the n minus 1 term. The one before that would be n minus 2. So, if I were to substitute the n minus 2 instead of the r here, I would have 1 over 2 times n minus 2 plus 1, which we can simplify that denominator. So I'll have 2 times n minus 2 is 2n minus 4 plus the 1. So that's going to be 2n minus 3. Minus... 1 over 2 times n minus 2 plus 3. Again, we can simplify that denominator. 2 times n minus 2 is 2n minus 4 plus the 3 will be 2n minus 1.
Next, let's substitute the n minus 1 in now. So 1 over 2 times n minus 1 plus 1, which would simplify the 2 times the n minus 1 would be 2n minus 2 plus the 1 would be 2n minus 1. Then the 1 over 2 times n minus 1 plus 3. Again, simplifying, the 2 times n minus 1 would be 2n minus 2 plus the 3 would be 2n plus 1. And then finally, substituting the n in, I'll have 1 over 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 3. Right, that is all of the uh, long, laborious bit done. Now we have the nice, hopefully simple bit of spotting some cancellations. Because the, remember, there's a reason why I didn't simplify all of these things previously. I didn't want to work out what one, fifth, one third minus one fifth was. I didn't want to simplify that because now, just looking down the way I've set this out, I can see that when I add all these things together, which I'm going to do because it's a sum, the minus one fifth here would cancel out with the plus one fifth here. The minus one seventh here would cancel out with the plus one seventh here. The minus one ninth here would cancel out with a minus one ninth here. And so on. There would be another term here that would cancel out with this one over two n minus three we can see this term here is going to cancel out with this term here. And then finally, we can also see that this one, uh, minus 1 over 2n plus 1 is going to cancel out with this. So by adding all of those terms together, the only thing that doesn't cancel out is the 1 third at the beginning and the minus 1 over 2n plus 3 at the end. And all I want to do now is simplify this. So I want to get a common denominator. So if I cross multiply, oh, should be a 2. So that's me just getting a common denominator. And so my answer then as a single fraction in its simplest form is that. And there we go. That is the sum of that series. So key thing is the way I've set this question out. In rows, first row, r equals 1, second row, r equals 2, then r equals 3, and so on. We could do more than that we could do four rows and then also do the n n minus one n minus two n minus three we could do that but i certainly wouldn't do any less than what i've done there it's really important to do that at least that to give you a chance of spotting the pattern okay next example part a has been done for us again so we've expressed uh, 2 over uh, r plus 1 times r plus 3 in the partial fractions, and it's the same thing as 1 over r plus 1 minus 1 over r plus 3. Part B, hence, we need to show that the sum from the first term to the nth term is equal to that n times 5n plus 13, or either the 6n plus 2n plus 3. And we'll come back and we'll do part C in a moment. So, let's... Get a fresh sheet with lots of room so that we can set this out carefully. And literally, if I, was, if I was sat here in front of you with a piece of squared paper, I would probably use up a whole side of A4 for this. It's really important you organise this carefully. So, the first term, R equals 1. 
So substitute the 1 into this first term. 1 over 1 plus 1 is 1 half. 1 over 1 plus 3 is a quarter. And remember, I am not going to simplify that. I'm going to leave it like that. Next, r equals 2. So 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 over 2 plus 3 is 1 fifth. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, r equals 3. 1 over 3 plus 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 3. And I'm going to do the next. I'm actually going to do r equals 4 this time as well. 1 over 4 plus 1 minus 1 over 4 plus 3. And so on. At the bottom here, I'd have r equals n. I'm going to do r equals n minus 1, r equals n minus 2. And obviously, there would be other terms as well in the middle here. Right, substituting the n plus, uh, sorry, the n minus 2 in now. So we've got 1 over n minus 2 plus 1 which is just going to be simple, that's just going to simplify to be uh, 1 over n minus 1. Minus 1 over n minus 2 plus 3, which is going to simplify to be 1 over n plus 1. Next, 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 would simplify just to be 1 over n. Minus 1 over n minus 1 plus 3, which is going to simplify to be 1 over n plus 2. And finally, we have the 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 3. Right. Now some cancellation. So I can see at the beginning I've got a minus 1 quarter here. And I've got a plus 1 quarter here. So those two terms would cancel out. I've got a minus one fifth here, and I've got a plus one fifth here. So those terms would cancel out. I've got a minus one sixth that would cancel out with the next term here. The minus one seventh would cancel out with the next term, and so on. At the bottom here, this um, 1 over n minus 1, that is going to cancel out with some term up here. <coughs> Excuse me. The 1 over n would cancel out with this term here. The 1 over n plus 1 is going to cancel with this minus 1 over n plus 1. And so all of the terms cancel out apart from the 1 half, the 1 third, the minus 1 over n plus 2, the minus 1 over n plus 3. Now all I want to do is get a common denominator. <coughs> Excuse me. And multiply this, so my common denominator is going to be 2 times 3 times n plus 2 times n plus 3. So the first fraction, the half there, I need to times by 3. 
I need to times by n plus 2 and n plus 3. The second fraction, the 1 third there, I need to times that by 2. I need to times it by n plus 2 and n plus 3. Then I've got minus the 2 times 3 times n plus 3. And then the final fraction, I've got the minus 1 times the 2 times 3 times the n plus 2. To simplify all that, let's expand those brackets. So I would get 3n squared plus 15n plus 18 plus 2n squared plus 10n plus 12 minus 6n minus 18 minus 6n minus 12 all over 6 times n plus 2 times n plus 3. Collecting up like terms on the numerator then. Uh, we've got the 5n squared, the 3n squared plus the 2n squared. We've got the 15n and the 10n to give 25n. And then we have got the... Um, Uh, we've got the plus 18, the plus 12, the minus 18, the minus 12. So all of those terms are going to cancel out. The plus 18 cancels with this minus 18. The plus 12 there cancels with that minus 12 there. Uh, we've got the minus 6n, the minus 6n that I should have collected together with that 25n. So the 25n, take away those 6n's, that should actually be 13n. The only other thing I need to do here to make it look like what I was asked to show is factorise an n outside. And there we go. That was the result that I was asked to prove. So all of this stuff down the right hand side... All of this is just algebra, nothing new there. That's just some algebraic fractions. The key thing on the left-hand side here is setting your work out really carefully. Notice that I did four, one, two, three, four rows here to help me spot the pattern. The more rows you do, obviously the more work it is, but the more likely it is you're gonna spot what cancels out. Right, let's just go back to that question and finish it off because there was a part C of that question. Where it said, evaluate the sum from the 10th term to the 100th term of that, uh, of that series. Which actually, this is more of a, um, a year 12 question. A year 12 further maths question. Because hopefully you remember, to do this, I am going to work out the sum of the first 100 numbers. So I'm going to do the sum from 1 to 100. And then I'm going to take away the numbers that I don't want. So I'm going to take away the first nine numbers because I only want to do the sum from the tenth number onwards. So I take away the first nine. Now I can use this result to work out the answer to both of these sums. So the first one, n is 100. So I would do 100 times 5 times 100 plus 13 over 6 times 100 plus 2 times 100 plus 3. So the answer to that calculation would be the sum of the first 100 terms. And then I'll take away the first 9 terms. So n is 9 now. So the denominator 6 times uh, 9 plus 2 times 9 plus 3. And then, um, yeah, whatever answer we get there, that would be the sum from the 10th term up to the 100th term. So I'll, I'll let you type that into your calculators and figure that out. That's not the point of the video. The point of the video is 
how we're setting our workout. That's what's crucial.